This voiceover talks about regulating skeletal muscle contraction, and as you'll see, the regulation is by calcium ions. This is a cartoon. Let's anchor it to an EM picture, a longitudinal section showing what the myofibrils look like, with the sarcoplasmic reticulum and T tubules showing as well. The cartoon shows a motor neuron, the neuron that innervates a muscle cell, attaching to this muscle at a neuromuscular junction. And we're going to see an animation of the sort of thing that happens. A nerve impulse will be moving down this axon to the nerve terminus to the neuromuscular junction that leads to an action potential. So here's our nerve impulse. The membrane depolarizes. Here we have the depolarization and the traveling, the propagation of that depolarization along the muscle membrane. Let's look at that once more. There's the propagation of that point of depolarization along the muscle membrane until it reaches a transverse tubule where the propagation is then continued down the tubule towards the sarcoplasmic reticulum shown in yellow here. The propagation of that depolarization continues into the sarcoplasmic reticulum and in the sarcoplasmic reticulum there is a, an opening of calcium channels and a release of calcium which now bathes the contractal proteins, the actin and the myosin. The ion channels that open up will later serve to recapture the calcium after contraction is over. Well, let's take a closer look at the actin filaments in muscle. Actin is actually associated with many, many different kinds of proteins that enable it to function appropriately. So here we see some. There are the actins, this twin helix of polymerized globular actin proteins. And lying along the length, about every seven or eight actins in this double helix, if you will, are molecules of tropomyosin shown in darker blue. And attached to each of those at about every seventh or eighth actin are a series of small proteins called troponins. These are going to function in the response of actin to calcium. So in this image, we are looking at a cross-section through an actin filament. And the two white balls are the two globular or G-actins that are part of a chain, but we've sliced through the actin filament, and so we can only see two of them, one's behind the other. And this is in the region where the tropomyosin and the three troponins come together. If you were to do serial sections through a thin filament extracted from muscle, you would see this image roughly every seven or eight actin monomers. We have names for the troponins. They're troponin T, I, and C. We are not going to be too concerned with what each of them is called or what they specifically do. I want you to get the general picture of how calcium interacts with the troponins, changing the shape of the troponins and eventually the shape of the tropomyosin and giving access to the myosin heads. So this is that cross-section. In the presence of calcium, as you can see, the troponins and the tropomyosin have shifted position, exposing two sites, one on each actin in this monomer, to which the myosin heads can now bind. And for as long as there is calcium in the vicinity of the myofibrils able to interact with the actin, myosin heads will now be able to go through their conformational changes and draw actin filaments along myosin. It's all a matter of shape, remember? Conformational changes induced by calcium binding to troponin C, which causes a conformational change in the other troponins and in tropomyosin. And that conformational change is reflected as a movement away from the sites where myosin can bind. Let me add that during muscle contraction, you are sending nerve impulses to that neuromuscular junction and continually firing off action potentials which get propagated down the T-tubules to the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and calcium continues to bathe those myofibrils. When you no longer wish to contract that skeletal muscle, you stop sending the nerve impulses, the calcium is retrieved back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum by a calcium pump, and the calcium no longer bathes the actin. The tropomyosin and the troponins resume their position, occluding or covering the myosin binding sites, and contraction basically stops, and the muscle relaxes, or can be relaxed.